Global Connections here on ThinkTech's live streaming network. I'm your host, Grace Chang, here today with Professor Patricio Abinales of the University of Hawaii to talk about Duterte's mouth and Philippine politics today. Welcome, Professor Morales. Thank you. Uh, well, may I call you Jojo? Yeah, you can call me Jojo. <laughs> yes, and, and we're going to talk about your the president of uh, the Philippines today mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Philippine politics as, mm -hmm. as we're seeing it unfold recently. <laughs> so very, very eventful. And you teach uh, Asian studies at the University of Hawaii. I do, Hawaii. and uh, the, I run the Philippine seminar. Mm -hmm. And I'm running a new course called Food and Culture in Asia. Oh, yeah, interesting. For undergraduates. Yeah, and you've been at University of Hawaii for five this years now. My, yeah, yeah this is, I'm going into my sixth year. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah and, and welcome to the program. Thank nice you. to I'm have you to be here. here. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about your background before we begin? Oh, I had a very circuitous background. I come from the northern, southern part of the Philippines, Mindanao. Uh, I went to the University of the Philippines in 72. We were the freshman year when Marcos declared martial law. So I never learned about democracy for the next 15 years. Um, and then I taught the university before I accidentally uh, and ended up in grad school in Cornell. It's a long story. And stayed there and met my wife there. And uh, after that, we went to Ohio. My wife got a job there. And then we moved to Kyoto, in Japan, and where we stayed there for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then Hawaii, UH, hired me. Mm -hmm. Well, this uh, title of today's program, Duterte's Mouth and Philippine Politics Today, this was your suggestion. And it's kind of, it, came, it came a couple weeks ago, but it's kind of perfect because uh, the end of last week, President uh, Rodrigo Duterte. Duterte, he said he would stop cussing. And <laughs> he's been a very interesting yeah. personality to have yeah, as, as the head of state of the uh -huh. Philippines um, and subsequently quickly broke that promise. But you know, he's, he's been a very dynamic figure and what, a bit of a, a controversial one, yes, and a little bit yes. of an enigma, I think, from on this side of the right, Pacific right. to understand him. Yeah. Um, yeah, he is, because, well, Filipinos in the US, apparently, who could ha vote in the Philippines, voted highly for him. I think they say 40%. Mm -hmm. so he's a very popular president among people in the South, outside of Manila. Um, He's a new, but I mean, he's a, he's a new car, new politician for them, partly because he was mayor, and this is, he's the first mayor to become president. And, and if you know the local politics in the Philippines, it's very personalized. It's all this glad handling and cursing and mm -hmm. um, getting people to vote by paying off their you know, paying uh, paying for the ballots and all. And so what has happened is local, the, the sort of language in local politics, which includes a lot of cursing, now becomes nationalized. He uh, brings it there. And, um, and so my reaction to him, because he speaks, I speak the same language as him, is to think of him of how my aunts curse. He actually, he actually reminds me of my aunts when they're drunk. Uh -huh. They curse like <laughs> them. Yeah. So I grew up with that. I grew up in a, lo in a small town where every, in every campaign, political campaign, uh, politicians will go up on the stage and curse everybody. You know, <laughs> I went to jail and I found him with, I found him with his mistress. I, so it's called a, it's a tabloid type of, uh -huh. of, of uh, uh, speeches because you have to control the, car, the crowd. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you have to be an actor and all that. <laughs> that's him. That's him. That's the, and that, the, the problem is he still thinks, I think he's still mayor of Davao City and he's president now. And people tend to re fail to remind him of that. <laughs> so, so his mouth, therefore, if you want to understand why he curses a lot, that is coming from the kind of city he grew up in. Mm -hmm. It was a, Davao in the 1960s was known as the Las Vegas of the South, of the Philippine South. There's a lot of smuggling, there's a lot of, uh, of, there's a lot of um, uh, gambling. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of smuggled goods were coursed through Davao because it had a nice port. And, um, it was also a town where some of those unusual characters become mayor. Uh, mm -hmm. There was a former communist guerrilla who was sent to Mindanao to expand, uh, supposedly to expand the movement there, ends up dis disconnected from his comrades. And so he settles to Davao, becomes a police officer, police chief, and becomes a mayor. So it's a sort of a frontier town. Mm. Um, and. Um, it think, and, and so it, it, it has a, a Jesuit university, but it never really went as high as in terms of exposure, like Manila. You know, Manila is a big, big metropolis, very cosmopolitan. Davao is not, until very recently. And so um, 
the 30 became fa famous for two reasons. One is he was actually the first one to, for the only mayor to bring peace to the city. In the 1970s, the Communist Party had urban net uh, guerrillas in the city and organizing them, organizing protests and strikes there. Uh, but, in the, but then the uh, military formed anti-communist anti vigilante groups. So Davao City became a battle zone. In fact, the section, a section of Davao called Agdao, people call it Nicaragdao. Mm -hmm. Everybody, every day there was killings and all. Over and above, the smuggling, the drug trade and everyone thing. The 30 came to power promising to bring peace into Davao. And the story goes that the first thing he did was eliminate the right-wing militia mm -hmm. and then come to terms with the communists saying you can do your ambushes, you can ambush military guys outside of my city jurisdiction. Don't come in, you don't do, don't make, don't, don't uh, uh, do trouble in the city. And then went after the target syndicates uh, because he wanted to control, I mean, the l large part of Davao City were controlled by drug syndicates. And that's mm -hmm. how this extrajudicial killing started. Mm -hmm. um, in the meantime, and this is the president. When he became mayor, may may he became mayor, He's one of the first mayors in the Philippines okay, to legalize prostitution. Mm -hmm. So he has uh, houses, for, uh, uh, houses for prostitutes if they are sex workers, if they are, if they're, you know, beaten up by their pimps. Uh, he's, uh, he, they have free medical care. Mm -hmm. um, he's also the first mayor of city council uh, issued a statement in favor of LGBT. Uh, no other mayor mm -hmm. did that. Um, he's pro-environment. Uh, and he actually is uh, in favor of um, free, free hospitals. They had, mm -hmm. they, in the 80s, they experimented with this, but it didn't work. Where if you're a member of a cooperative, you join a hospital cooperative, and everything is free from, uh, in, uh, from root canal to you know, uh, uh, a wound in the, in the toe. Uh -huh. so, so it's very socially minded, mm -hmm. and that allows for a couple of things. He has a, the weird, one of the most unusual coalitions in the city mm -hmm. because it consists of traditional politicians, reformists, and communists, and liberals. So they all work together mm. under him. And, and that accounts for a number of things. It cleaned up the city. Um, when I was doing my field research for my, graduate, uh, for my dissertation, I was in Davao. And one of the fa things that I really fascinated me was every time Duterte catches someone who's trying, a thief, uh, 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 you know, stealing money from a taxi driver. He calls all the taxi driver for radio and says, mm -hmm. line up at City Hall, one punch each, oh. before I send this guy to jail. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, so this is like, wow, and, and, and people respond. You know? Different kind um, of justice. Different <laughs> kind of justice, before they put you in the legal, you know, in the uh. legal system, you can beat him up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's called a frontier, a kind of frontier by uh, mm. character that made him. Um, some of the interesting developments that we met after I left was, it's one of the no, sm no smoking cities in the Philippines, and um, it's one of two cities in the Philippines where nobody's, where everybody stops on a red light at 2 a.m. <laughs> for fear that he might be around and he'll beat them up. And no smoking zone, you follow, uh, you follow the speed limit. Um, and uh, that's basically it. And he has 99% support from, from, the, from the town. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So many kind of social justice minded and he's been pretty effective, uh, right. even if heavy handed. I mean, that's one of the things uh, I think in, in the U.S. press we hear most about him. We, didn't, yeah. we haven't heard that much about his, his previous political career, but uh, as far as, yeah, like his, his conduct of the war on drugs, right, he's been pretty heavy handed, as you were mm -hmm. mentioning, mm -hmm. how he, he cleaned up uh, against the right wing militias mm -hmm. when he was mayor, and it seems like he's been doing, you know, using similar tactics on, and the on China. And that's, I think, the more worrisome, because mm -hmm. now you're dealing with a nation, mm -hmm. you're not dealing with a city, uh, and he thinks that the war he waged against criminals and drug addicts in the city could apply to the larger network of the nation. And I think it's a very big problem for him because, you know, you're president now. You have to have some, you represent the country. And if you're suggesting that, you know, allow the, the police to kill anybody and saying, I, I'll be like Hitler and kill like a million drug addicts, 
then that doesn't look nice, even among Filipinos mm -hmm. who expect their president to be at least, you know, honorable and principled. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so that's the problem that he has to face now. And, but then his reaction is typically the reaction of a mayor. He mm -hmm. curses and he mm -hmm. says, you know, <laughs> okay, if you don't want this, then, then goodbye, you know, I'll turn around and do something else. Um, so, um, it's, I think, difficult for his staff to handle someone like him now. Yeah. Um, it's also more difficult the fact that he actually, while he reads a lot, he actually has this series of biases against the United States. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and it's a personalized kind of politics now. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, the relations with the U.S. has, has um, been, I guess, sort of turned around a little bit because of some of the things, like, for example, the, yeah, the war on drug, his conduct, because, uh, you mm -hmm. know, some of the U.S. senators on the, the, the Foreign Relations mm -hmm. Committee are saying, we will no longer sell right. Philippines, the, the assault rifles, the national police, if they're going to use right. it right. Uh, to violate human rights. And then also his... Uh, President Duterte's recent statement that we are, uh, annou he announced the separation yeah, the of United the States. Philippines from the United States. Right, um, right. Well, I think um, it, it's the product of a spy, uh, what he thought was a personal insult by the U.S. government and him. Uh, in 2004, a, an American sort of uh, fortune seeker uh, landed in Davao. Uh, sending messages to the different rebel groups saying that he knew how to make bombs. One of the bombs he made exploded in his hotel room. And so he got hospitalized and was to be arrested. But while he was in the hospital, the U.S. Embassy come, came in and took him away and sent him back to the U.S. without informing the 30. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, local mayors link, think of themselves as running cities on a personal basis. So he thought it was, he considered that an insult to, to his you know, position as mayor. And so his response to that is to ban military, U.S. military officers in Davao City. Mm -hmm. They could not come in. Um, and then there's the story about him being denied a visa to the United States when he was trying to visit his girlfriend. Uh -huh. <laughs> and oh. they think that that also was, you know, the humiliation of having to line up and being told by a young consul that you can't, you know, go to the United States because with no, with no explanation at all, hit on him. The third thing is, when he was a young man, he studied under uh, one of the, the founder of the Communist Party of the Philippines. So, you know, he was around in the 60s, it was the, year, the era of protest. It was also the era of Filipino nationalism, mm. and with a big segment of that led by communists. So he was politicized by, this, uh, by these professors, mm -hmm. and he still calls them professor, and he carried that with them. And of course, what happened then is, as mayor, he took the criticism very personally and then lashed back at the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, why does he think he, um, he can do it? Well, he thinks he's, you know, he's stronger than anybody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very, yeah, he's made a lot of very strong statements, that's for sure. And mm -hmm. I think it's raised a lot of eyebrows, and, but interesting to hear about some of his, the background might, uh, where he might be coming yeah. from. Um, so thank you, Professor Avinales. We will take a short break. Um, you, you're watching Global Connections. I'm your host, Grace Chang, talking to Professor Patricio Avinales about Duterte's mouth in Philippine politics today. We'll be back in a minute. Aloha, my name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Law Across the Sea. Join me every other Monday when we bring lawyers who know how to get across the sea to meet people and resolve problems into your house. Thank you. Hello, my name is Crystal. Let me tell you, my talk show, I'm all about health. It's healthy to talk about sex. It's healthy to talk about things that people don't talk about. It's healthy to discuss things that you think are unhealthy because you need to talk about it. So I welcome you to watch Quok Talk and engage in some provocative discussions on things that do relate to healthy issues and have a well-balanced attitude in life. Join me. Hello, and welcome to Global Connections. I'm your host, Grace Chang, here with Prof. 
Professor Patricio Aguinales of the University of Hawaii, where he's a professor of Asian Studies. And we're talking here today about President Duterte of the Philippines, the title of our program, Duterte's Mouth and Philippine Politics Today, because of the interesting things that uh, President Duterte has been saying. Welcome mm -hmm. back, uh, Professor Albinas. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. So as we were talking about, um, this is you were providing us with some really interesting background mm -hmm. as to maybe some of the ways that that uh, President Duterte is seeing uh, mm -hmm. the, the United States. Because yeah, his his announcement of the separation with the yeah. U.S. and his kind of suggestions that you know we should cut these, this perhaps cut the mutual defense uh, treaty mm -hmm. and mil joint military exercises. Mm -hmm. This is kind of nothing has happened yet. This is just, this is coming from his mouth, but it is something that. I think has raised a lot of eyebrows and some concerns. Uh, definitely, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you go down into the level of the bureaucracy, that's a completely different matter. I mean, the military, the Philippine military, especially the units operating in the in the south, you know, pr uh, protecting the south from terrorist in, in infiltration, trying to uh, police this. It's a Muslim separatist group, their armed group. Um, there's a Muslim se kidnapping enterprise called Abu Sayyaf. These guys are able to contain these threats because of the help of American special forces. Mm -hmm. So they're worried about that. Uh, the intelligence uh, that American uh, special forces provide was very instrumental in the death of a couple of kidnappers, uh, from the leaders of the Abu Sayyaf. And the other thing is um, the next generation, this senior generation of military officers have actually shifted away from being an insurgent force into an external defense force. And their training is from the U.S. They went to, you know, they went to Fort Bragg, they went to Monterey. So the kind of mentality they have is with the, is very American in training. Mm -hmm. And um, down from ex military exercises, tactics, and, and strategies uh, to the kind of bullets that you, you may have is very much connected to the U.S. So that's the first thing that uh, I think is going to be a deterrent to the 30s proclamation mm -hmm. that he'll be separate. He will separate the Philippines from the U.S. The second one is 92% of Filipinos love the United States, mm -hmm. more than Americans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's a Pew Research uh, study that showed which countries love the U.S. the most. Yeah. Israel and the Philippines topped everybody else. <laughs> and the U.S., I think, was number four, number five. Uh -huh. So 92% of Filipinos are pro-U.S. And there was a survey done on lo national, locally, uh, two weeks ago. Uh, determining how Filip what Filipinos think of the Chinese mm -hmm. is very negative. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he has to, you know, he he has, he will encounter this. And there's what eight million Filipinos in the United States alone. Mm -hmm. uh, Twenty billion dollars of the income of the country are remittances from Filipinos abroad, you know, including yes. me. So his minister of finance says, okay, uh, I think there's a limit to this. <laughs> And it's, I think the only the only one who's uh, towing the, the line is the foreign secretary. Mm -hmm. But the major the military and the finance sector, finance department are definitely saying you can do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, in the Philippines gets the most U.S. aid for um, maritime security right. in in Southeast Asia, and especially you know with the the conflict with China over mm -hmm. over the the well you call it the West Philippine the Sea, West the Chinese call it the South China Sea, yeah. and and the um, you know with the with this pronouncement of of his uh, separation from the U.S. He's Duterte has also suggested he wanted to move closer to China. So this is very surprising given mm. these kinds of conflicts in, right. in the nearby waters. Yeah, and it's another contradiction here. The Chinese, I, th I think one of the reasons why he's pro-China is the fact that if you go to Mindanao, his island, the Chinese are the fastest moving, in, fastest rising investment, and has the fastest rising investment in that island. Mm -hmm. uh, mining, f uh, mining export crops, like from bananas to pineapples, fish. Mm -hmm. um, so these are these corp, uh, industries are targeting China now as the huge market. Mm -hmm. In other parts of the Philippines, Chinese investments are not really that high. So mm -hmm. if you aggregate it, it's not really big. Mm -hmm. It's like zero point three percent. But if you track where they're going, they're going to Mindanao. I see. And therefore, uh -huh. that's one reason, one financial reason why, one economic reason why the thirty says, you know, we have to cl get closer, have closer ties with China. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But it's it's very surprising. I mean, as far as he he doesn't seem to to be so concerned about the the, the conflict over the territorial waters. No, That's and it, um, and oh yeah, because I forgot one thing about local politics in the Philippines. 
everything is pragmatic. You know, there's mm -hmm. no political par programs, there's no policies. Mm -hmm. Everything is run personally, and coalitions and alliances go b shift. Yeah. And one of the things that's very most local politicians do in terms of pragmatic politics is marry of the son to the rival's daughter, uh -huh. so they have united things. So for him, yeah. it's not a question of principle; it's a question of being pragmatic about it. We won't win a war against China. Mm -hmm. Let's find a way to settle it with China. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Most Filipinos agree in principle, but probably are worried about you know going to China, but then leaving the United States. Yeah, I mean, yeah. In other countries, there's there's kind of you know ambivalence about China because it, you know after before China's so so called rise. Um, the, this kind of uh, free market, which is led by Western economies, mm -hmm. didn't really bring a lot of results. And so actually with Chinese going out more into international markets, mm -hmm. there has been more immediate results. So mm -hmm. I think there, there is kind of some, a little bit of interest in, in uh, well, what is the Chinese model of development and courting Chinese investment. But yeah, there's a lot of ambivalence mm -hmm. uh, about that, I can see. Um, but his, uh, his uh, Duterte's uh, envoy to China, Fidel Ramos, pre former president, he, he recently resigned, is right. that correct? It sounds yeah. like within the, within the political decision-making elites in, in the Philippines, they're, they're not necessarily yeah. with him on this. I think there is considerable debate inside. Mm -hmm. The one thing I forgot is that the, the, the richest, 10 richest families in the Philippines are all Chinese Filipinos. Mm -hmm and have considerable investments in China, in southern China especially. So that's one factor. But you're right. Uh, the ca I think the cabinet meetings are you know, becoming more and more divisive. There's debate on policy. Because uh, he brought in some communists into the cabinet too, uh -huh. very anti-American, uh, along with pro-US business um, uh, officials. And, um, and this is reflect, this is probably ref one, one hand reflective of his, the way he governs. He focuses on one issue and lets the others run the other issue. So he wants to kill drug addicts. So with the economy, with mm -hmm. politics, agriculture, land reform, he passes it on to every, the, the appropriate uh, secretaries and li allows them to s resolve things. Okay. It works with the city, but it doesn't work nationally. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I don't know how he's going to deal with this. He might, you know, uh, I wrote a comical piece about his first day in cabinet where everybody was shouting at each other. And he threatened to kill them. <laughs> so I think I think the cabinet meetings are going to be more and more uh, divisive and uh, uh, rancorous. I think. Yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. Well, it's it's not that unusual. I mean, we're seeing in the American presidential elections yes. that, that yeah, there are people who are unsatisfied with kind of the way things have been going, moving yeah. very slowly. Change isn't moving uh, within politics isn't moving as quickly as change in people's lives. Right, and, and, right. and there's some people who have some more radical or radically different right. approaches, and that seems, to be, uh, that seems to be the case here, as we see, but not, not terribly unusual, I mean, as yeah. far as I mean, around the world. Filipinos want peace, uh, peace mm -hmm. in their communities, stability in their, com in their communities. And the first culprit that they see is the drug addict in the corner, uh, selling or the drug pusher selling uh, uh, you know, uh, heroin or methamphetamines to the children. So when he does this, you know, for Filipinos in, their co in these communities, it's a good sign that, you know, uh, the most number, number one problem in the community has, gone, has disappeared and yeah. now they can go on with their lives. So that's one of the reason why, reasons why he's very popular in, mm -hmm. at the local level, especially among the poor. Yeah. Yeah, because people have immediate problems. Precisely. It seems like he's been very, at least, effective, and in, in they can immediately grasp uh, the impact of mm -hmm. his approach. Um, do, would you say that the average person in the Philippines cares so much about his foreign policy, um, unlike you know you were talking about the the you know the decision makers in the defense or finance ministries? I think only in vaguely they say, well, you know, oh, sure, by guns in China, oh, that's it's worrisome to the Americans, cut of aid. But at the end of the day, it's, you know, how to live my life, I have to continue mm -hmm. with my livelihood. So it's no question that Filipinos are still applying in, in, the big, in big numbers to the U.S. to become immigrants. Like 4,000 Filipinos leave the air, uh, international airport every day in search for jobs. Mm -hmm. So I think there's about 12, 13 million Filipinos abroad now. Yes. Um, yeah. And so this, it, the sound bites are there because, because of TV and everything, but I doubt if... It's the, it has really sunk in the most Filipinos' mind. I mean, it hasn't that sunk into my brother. My brothers are like, 
okay, sure, as long as he kills the drug addicts in, in our street, then that's fine with me. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, he can do anything he wants. So he's, he's popular in Mindanao, which is in the southern part of the Philippines. Yeah. What about in other parts of the Philippines? Um, he's popular in the north because he's mm -hmm. uh, allies with the, the children of Ferdinand Marcos. Uh -huh. uh, he's, uh, he's unusual. Actually, he's very, very popular among the elites. Is that right? Because of the peace and order thing. Mm -hmm. Filipino elites are just quiet about it, but they're, quiet, they're happy mm -hmm. that you have somebody who's gone up for crime. Mm -hmm. Is that popular among the intellectuals and the middle class? Mm -hmm. Because you know, these are the groups that, are, that follow the law, that respect the law. Uh, so, um, um, he's not popular. He's very popular with the Muslims, by the way, because he's going to give them their autonomy. Mm -hmm. So against him are a very small group. Mm -hmm. of you know, civil society organizations, uh, university presidents, uh, uh, university kids. Uh, and that's a very, it's, you know, they're fighting a lost cause at the moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So a very mixed, very uh, mixed feelings among different yeah. constituencies. That's yeah. very interesting. Yeah, my friends back home call me a moderate doterterologist. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go back and forth. I'm from India now, so yeah. it's interesting to have somebody from India now become president for mm -hmm. the first time, you know, and uh, somebody who speaks my language, yeah. uh, including the metaphors, as I said, uh -huh. told you. I spend more time laughing at his curses than being shocked by it because, you know, I grew up with it. And on the other hand, you see these dead bodies every day mm -hmm. reported in media. Uh, you see this, you know, of, cause of the mark remark, of this, you know, out he throws away his uh, speech and you know, rumbles for <laughs> about China and separation and uh, joining in an alliance with Russia. Uh, and that's also worrisome because it causes, you know, then his cabinet officials have to figure out what he was really saying. Yeah. And there's criticism there. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, we w yeah, well, let's see what happens in the next, uh, by the end of the year. Yes, because he's only been in office since uh, June 30th, but already made quite an impact and quite an impression overseas yeah. and, and I'm sure among Filipinos mm -hmm. within the country. Right. Well, thank you so much thank for you, coming Chris. here, yeah, Professor Avinales. And um, I, I hope we'll see you again sometime. Oh, I'd be happy. Just, yeah, give me a call. Okay, yeah. excellent. All right, you've been watching Global Connections with Grace Chang here with uh, Professor Patricio Abinales talking about Philippine politics today. Join us next Thursday at 1 p.m. for more Global Connections.